I want to do a comparison between the skill 66 strategy that we've been working through and the quarter pounder with ease. And the reason why is this, Brian brought this up to me yesterday and um, he reminds me of something that I have said to you in the past, which is rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. I did a show a little while back called the come bet and place bet, where it wasn't a come bet versus place bet. It was like, let's look at how they both work. They should both be tools in your arsenal and they both win on a different rhythm. <clears throat> both the come bet and place bet are at risk at different times. There are times where they're both at risk because you're in the middle of a roll, but there are times when either one of them has more or less risk than the other, and they win at different times, which I think is interesting from A, the house edge perspective, but B, the win rate perspective. Brian reminds me that the quarter pounder with ease is a two roll strategy where the skill 66 is a two hit strategy, and there's, nuance in there in those details, right? The skill 66 is an inside play. It's two inside hits before you're even and ready to go to foundation, where the ease, the EZ is two rolls and you're at foundation. So there's a difference there. The price you pay to get out of the hand quicker though is risk. And I wanna show you at the table what this looks like, but here again are the basic strategies. The skill 66 starts out with a $66 inside bet. The five, six, eight, and nine at three units. On one inside hit, we press to $88, dropping an extra buck. So it costs you $67 to get into this hand. After that second hit, bring it back down to 44 inside or 44 wherever you want it and you have a $5 profit and you're out of the hand in two hits, that's beautiful. The EZ, the quarter pound with EZ is a little more than that, it's 165 out the door. So it's a $60 six and eight. It's a $5 each of two hopping fives. So it's 60, 60, 10, and then 35 in the field. It's a giant iron cross with a hopping five instead of a place five, okay? 165 out. Every hit that you take though, <clears throat> brings back at least a quarter to your rack. So in two rolls of the dice that aren't sevens, of course, you're back to even. The difference is, you're out. <clears throat> you're out for 165 instead of being out for 66. So your bankroll requirements are a lot bigger. So exactly, Michael, you're, you're, you're giving it the thing. It's a, it's a $100 risk and you're putting more risk out there because you're trying to, to, to run from time. Remember in craps, you're always running from something from an exposure standpoint. So <clears throat> let's go to the table. I'm gonna go, the, go back to the table. I wanna show you with the chips how this looks and maybe that'll help um, to explain the larger point that I'm trying to make here. So let me go ahead and switch over to the table view. Right and now. as you can see, I've got two bank rolls set up, okay? And no, I'm not doing a hedge, by the way. I'm gonna do no hedge. And again, we're gonna talk about why that is, but I'm gonna put this up on screen. There will be no hedging today. Um, you can certainly hedge, obviously. Um, I'm gonna run the strategy as pure. I want, you to sh I want you to see what the raw strategies do and how they work, all right? So let's get them set up. The 66 inside from skill and luck. Let's turn the puck off here. I'm gonna put 70 bucks out. And what I've got in my rack, by the way, for each strategy <coughs> is five shots. So I've got 70 bucks five times for this. Actually, I miscounted one of them. 70 bucks five times for the skill and luck 66. I've got 165 five times for the HCS quarter pounder with ease. So we're gonna take five shooters or five shots at this with each one of them, all right? Let's show you how they set up and I'll explain the strategy. So the 66 inside, I'm gonna drop 70 bucks to the dealer and say, give me 66 inside, which they will do. They'll take the 50. They're gonna give us five, three, and 10. And get, I'll, put, I'll put the 66 in the back. We'll do that back here. So we'll get 15. This will be 18, 18, 18, like so with $4 back in the rack. I'll put that over here. The way that this strategy purports to work is this. There are, again, three units, 15, 18, 18, and 15. If we to roll an inside number, they pay 21 bucks, 21. We're gonna drop a buck out of our rack to make our total outlay 66 bucks, plus one is 67 bucks out. We're gonna say 22, inside pressure, we're gonna get all the things pressed up by one unit, which brings our inside play now to $84.
the next inside hit that you get, any one of these numbers, we get that, that's gonna pay, I'll pay it out here in, um, in reds, it'll pay 28 bucks, like so. We come back down now, we regress it down to 44. So you're gonna come back, everything gets reduced down to two units. Coming back to your rack, if we're gonna do the exact math that we started with, let's take a look at the numbers here. There's 50, 60, there's your 70, 50, I'm sorry, 55, 50, 60, five. There's the 70 bucks that you started with. A Little bit of extra juice, okay? This strategy brings you back home in two hits, ready for the next one. Just like that. It's a pretty cool little play. And actually these two plus those three give you a $5 total profit. So you're in $5 in profit, <clears throat> ready to play again, <clears throat> and you're at your foundation, excuse me. <clears throat> and you're at your foundation. 66 inside, press to 88, reduce to 44. You're playing for free with 44 bucks. Beautiful thing. Two hits, easy and you're regressed and you're totally safe after those two hits. Now, the EZ works a little differently. The, the, the HCS EZ works like this. It's 165 out the door. This looks like a $30, I'm sorry, $60, six, $60 eight. I'll spread those out so you can see them, 60 on each. It's $5 each on the hopping fives. I don't have hops on my table, but these will represent the hops down here. We'll put, actually put them up here in the, like their combats. Those two are the hopping fives. And then you put $35 in the field. And what this means is, if it's not a seven, you're getting paid on something. Let's take the fives, for example. If, if a five were to roll, you would lose the 35 in the field plus one of your fives. You would get paid 75 bucks. I'll actually pay that with some reds. I'll give you five reds and two greens. You're gonna get paid 75 bucks on this five. What you do is you replace the five that you lost, you put $35 back in the field, you're racking 35 bucks over here. That's nice on a five. On a six or an eight, what, was, what would happen is this. You would lose the hopping fives, you would lose the field, but you would win 70 for 60. What that looks like to you, put the hopping fives back, put the 35 back in the field, Quarter goes back to your rack, hence the name quarter pounder. These always bring you back a quarter. If a field number wins, you'd again lose the hopping fives, but you would win 35 in the field, replace the fives, put a quarter back to your rack. Again, this wins you a quarter, this wins you a quarter, this wins you 35 bucks. So in all cases, you're winning about a quarter, no matter what the outcome is. The difference between the two strategies is this, it's, it's when those hits happen. This needs two inside hits back to back in order to work, or two inside hits during the roll, which means you could roll three field numbers, the four, the 10, a bunch of other stuff, and not ever hit your inside numbers before the seven. That happened to me yesterday a few times, right? We never did get our two hits on three of our, or three or four of our rolls because you're waiting for one of these four numbers to hit, you're, you're pinpointing in here. The EZ, the quarter pounder has every number covered except for the seven. So any two rolls that aren't a seven and you're out of this hand, okay? Again, the price you pay for that is $165 out of your rack versus 66. So it's less money here on the skill 66 for more time exposed. The EZ, more money exposed for way less time, okay? Again, the risk, again, there's a price for that. The price to get out of this thing with only two rolls is a hell of a lot of exposure. The price to get out of this with only two rolls, less exposure, but man, you're out there for a lot of time potentially. So if you're rolling around the inside and not in the inside, this gets beat quite a bit. So I wanna roll this out and give you a sense of that rhythm here. So I'm gonna take this demonstration down and put the 66 bucks back out of my rack. Before I do that, I wanna give you a quick lesson in rackology over here, let's do that. Put these back in and explain this to you. What I've got here in both of my racks, again, the Skill 66 is in the back rack. The HCS Quarter Pound with Ease is in the front rack. I have five shooters worth, and we always talk about our goals. Our win goal is 20%, if we can get there. 
I like 20% as a win goal for lots of reasons, primarily because it's easy math. 20% is easy to calculate because here, when I've got one, two, three, four, five shooters in my rack set up ready to play, 20% means this. If I can win one extra shooter's worth, right? If I can keep my, my bankroll clean plus win one more, in other words, win, win 165, I'm done. Down here, if I can win 70 bucks, which means one, two, three, four, five, one more extra 70 bucks means I'm at 20%. When you break your rack into groups of five, you gotta just double up one of them and you got it, right? If you're breaking your rack in groups of 10, you gotta win two out of 10, make sense? 20% is easy to understand when you see it that way. So with that said, let's get it set up. I'm gonna set these up ahead of the roll just to make it quick and easy. So we'll get ourselves set up here with the, with the 66 across, or I'm sorry, 66 inside. And let's see, I have too many reds, my fault, uh, with our four bucks in change. Yeah, four bucks and change. The EZ we're gonna set up over here. We're gonna go with the six, eight field. Thirty-five in the field, hopping fives. Okay, we have the puck is gonna be off. I'm gonna come out. We're just gonna roll this thing out randomly. Brian says this is a strategy designed for a skilled shooter. I'm gonna roll it at random, and we're gonna do no hedging. Okay, I want you to see the strategies play out. Hedging, especially when I'm demonstration, when I'm demonstrating how these things work, when I hedge, it gives you a false sense of what wins, okay? You can hedge it if you want to in real time when you're playing it at the casino. Today, you've gotta to see these strategies win on their own right, not because I've hedged. I think a hedge, to me, gives me a, gives me a false sense of what it's actually doing. So we're gonna not hedge it, we're gonna play them straight out, and that's how it's gonna be. Here we go. <clears throat> I see a, I'm gonna actually address a couple of things here. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna hit that. Here we go. All right, here we go. Right side play on a bender, right? Here it is. The point was nine. Now again, the EZ just needs two hits. Any two numbers, not a seven. The, the 66 needs them to be inside hits. What you'll find is that the early seven aside, the early seven will crush both of us here. If we get our two hits, this person on the EZ is gonna be in their collect phase a lot quicker than this person is. Now they gotta collect more. They've gotta collect 165 to start showing profit, but they're gonna be on track to start that in an earlier stage. So it's a six, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a four, four, hard eight. We'll do the 66 first, that pays 21 bucks. We're gonna drop a buck. 22 pressure. So we're gonna press everything up by one. This person's now at their $88 level. The EZ, lose our fives, lose our field, but we're gonna get paid 70 bucks on that eight. We're gonna replace our five, we're gonna replace our field, and we're gonna rack 25 bucks. This is 25 hours towards our foundation. Next roll. Five, two, seven. All right, that's actually, it's not good, but it's good for the demonstration. Both strategies get whacked. Let's take it all down. And the net result is each player is down one fifth of their bankroll. The EZ did collect a quarter. This guy collected nothing, but they're both down one full shot which it feels like it's the same, and it kind of is. On a percentage basis, it is, they're both down the same amount percentage-wise. However, the dollars over here were a lot bigger. So let's go ahead and get reset. Hopping fives. And we'll do our, there we go. Easy is set back up. We'll get our 66 inside for this guy here. A second to get that get the chips out all right we'll get him set up there's 15 15 all right and we're back let's 
get a new point. Let's try to avoid the early seven again. Our new point's gonna be a 10. And again, here we go. If we can get two non-sevens, we're gonna be in good shape on both strategies. Aces, okay, that's beautiful. So here's the thing with the EZ. The EZ, because it's in the field, right? We're gonna lose our fives on a field number, but aces pay double, which means we're getting paid 70 bucks in our field. This player is now done. The EZ, we can pull our field bet and our place bets down completely. And I'm gonna pull it all back. So this person right now taking 10 bucks out of this win is back. That whole shooter is back and ready to play. This is their profit. And with before they had the 25 bucks from the last time, they're on their way to building back the one that they lost, right? That person's actually gonna start playing their foundational strategy. This person here has had nothing happen yet. They missed, that on, they missed out on a roll. So with this guy, let's take our 50 and let's do 44 inside. I'm just gonna do, actually I'll do 64 across with him. Um, no, 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 I'm, I'm gonna do the inside. I'm gonna do just the, I'm gonna have them both do the same strategy coming out of the gates. So we, we can compare apples to apples. So we're gonna go 44 inside with this guy. So there's, Let's do like this. All right, so they've got, again, potential profit of 25, 41 bucks in the rack. And again, that's gotta go ahead and replenish the shooter we lost. This guy here is on a collecting, but this guy is looking to now to start making money. This guy hasn't even gotten his first press yet. So again, from a rhythm standpoint, the ease, the EZ is nice because it gets you to be playing for profit earlier than this guy who has now had two rolls come and is still fighting the seven for two rolls. And there is the seven. So the net result of this, the 66 goes down twice in a row. The EZ didn't go down. Matter of fact, they showed a small profit out of the gate instead of going down. So here's a case where two rolls versus two hits made a big difference on that second shooter. Let's go out one more time here. And again, the skill 66 is gonna come back out there 70 bucks. We're gonna get four change. Put that back in the rack and come right back out with 66 oh, back here, sorry. The easy. Again, one more time, we'll do the same thing. 60, 60, 35, and the hopping. Here we go, coming out. It'll be a hard eight for the come out. Point will be eight. There's a four. So once again, the skill 66 gets nothing out of that roll. The easy, we'll lose our hopping fives for sure, but we're gonna get paid 35 bucks in the field. We can replace the fives, we can rack the quarter. And again, I know I've got money here that I could have just stayed on foundation with. I'm doing it shooter by shooter so you can see the rhythm of this thing. That's the reason why I'm doing that. Would I have played this again and avoided this? Probably, if I have enough for foundation. Here we go, it's hit number one for the EZ, still waiting for something here on the 66. There's a six, four, 10. So once again, we lose the fives. We're gonna get paid 35 in the field, and now we're considered to be done at this point. We are done. The EZ took two hits of any size, right? So there's, there's your sixes and eights, there's your EZ, or there's your fives rather, and here is your field. So this can go right back into the rack again. Shooter is clean. Come back up over here, and what we have in our rack now is I've got 75, 85, 90, Five, 96 bucks in the rack. Again, I'm still 165 light because we got whacked early, but we're making progress. Let's go to 44 inside again with this guy. Forty-four, we'll give him six change. Where's 50? And now we're back and playing. This guy here is back playing again. All right. Skill 66, still waiting for a hit. We took two field hits. We're out with the easy. This one here, it's safe because it's less money, 
but you got to get those two inside hits. You got to target these numbers and you need a roller that's going to not do that to you, which is what I keep doing, right? We're here again, three times in a row, we've gotten beat by that early seven. And again, the easy, no harm, no foul, right? We're out of that hand. I think they made about six bucks all told there. No big deal. Live to fight another day. Puck is off. Let's do it one more time. The skill 66 is going to have to do some fighting here to get back in. So we're going to go 66 inside. I'll set that right back up from the previous loss. Make it look easy. With four change. Got a handful of whites over here. So, so far, all that this strategy has done is bring back 15 white chips. Actually, I'll, I'll keep five of them because we need them for change. The easy, let's go back out again. And what's the point of all this, right? Why do we, why do right side players play this way? Like, what is the, what is the mentality behind try, fail, try, fail, try, fail? Well, you're going to have this. You're going to have these short, gross rolls like I'm doing here. It's going to happen. Um, what you're looking for, though, is the one. You're looking for that one roll that goes past the probability. So let's keep rolling here and see if this is that one roll. Let's get a new point. It's a seven on the come out. We don't care. Let's waste the seven now on the way out the door, right? Let's do that. There's two sevens in a row on the come out. If you're a back wall A guy, if you're a don't pass guy, you're in trouble here. There's three sevens in a row on the come out. People say that never happens. It happens all the time. Four, one, five. New point is going to be a five. Here we go. Five, two, seven. Ooh, boy, that was gross. That was four sevens and five rolls. Guys, four sevens in five rolls. Both players go down in a fiery ball of death right there. That's it. That's going to be the whole thing. The skill 66 has done zero. Matter of fact, this guy better have a stop loss of zero because he's about to go to his last shot. Here we go. 70 bucks. 66 inside, please. We'll do one last set. Greg, I know that you're watching. One thing that you have missed since you've been gone is the fact that I have turned into the world's biggest seven throwing machine. I'm telling you, I, I have, this right here is the new normal for us. Um, I think I counted one chip wrong. Okay, here we go, coming out. Everybody is set. Five, three, eight is the new point. Let's get this to be the roll. I'm pretty confident. There's the 10, six, four, 10. So the EZ will lose our fives get paid 35 in the field. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a chip light there. 35 in the field. There we go there. Um, racking up the quarter. Next roll is a one, two, three shocker. But didn't leave my money, I'm sorry about that. 35 bucks right there, we'll pay another 35 bucks. Lose our hopping fives. We can virtually replace them, because what I'm going to do is bring all this money back to the rack. Because we're done. We've hit our quarter goal two times. This player is out of the hand. This player is still waiting for their second hit. We're going to come back out here with, again, 44 inside. Can I get one hit? $6 change for your 50. And let's go. I think I might have shorted myself a quarter there, but let's go. We'll play it through anyway. Six, four, ten. All right, nobody gets help on the ten. Again, this this strategy hasn't hasn't collected one dime off this table yet. And there's another freaking seven. Wow. Okay, so the skill sixty six down in flames today. Huge bummer, man. I mean, that thing didn't didn't win one time. And whose fault is that? It's the shooter's fault, right? The easy did its thing. We did lose twice, right? We're down to three shooters plus this little piddly profit down here. Um, it's not even profit, it's just working our way back. But again, on those ugly short rolls, that is what happens. And it happens more often when I'm rolling live for you than it, well, maybe not. Maybe that's how it worked in the casino too. Um, when I'm at the casino, I see this happen right here more often than I see the long roll. So um, with that said, <clears throat> I'm going to set it back up again. I'm going to actually get the racks reset to five 
and run one more series with you because we got a few minutes of open time and I want to see I want to see the rhythm. I want to see that damn thing win at least once so we can get a sense of when it wins and how it wins. So let's get our, give me a second to get my rack set back with five more shots. We're going to go to the ATM. We're going to go ahead and buy in. And get the skill 66 back on, back into the game. One more. Okay, they're back in. The HCS needs five greens and I think it's seven whites. Five greens and eight reds, I'm sorry. Five greens and eight reds to get out. All right, there's shooter number two. And one more. All right, let's get them set up. All right, HCS is out. Skill 66 in for 70 bucks. It's gonna get $6 and change. I'm sorry, $4 and change. And out we go. I got a feeling that this is gonna be the roll. I got a feeling. You all have a feeling? Here we go. I'm actually gonna change out my dice. I'm gonna get those seven stinky, smelly dice out of here. We're gonna to go to the Yahtzee dice. Here we go. We're gonna come out to a new number. It's gonna be a five. Let's get it rolling here. Yahtzee dice for the win. Come on, baby. Six, three, nine. Okay, that's good. Finally, something different is gonna happen. Again, on the HCS, we're gonna lose the fives. We're gonna win. 35 in the field, that replaces the fives, racks a quarter. The skill 66 gets paid, 21. Drop a buck, 22 pressure. Let's get this thing built back up and down. Four, two, six, four, two, six. So again, what's gonna happen here in the skill 66, that pays 28 bucks for that $24 six. We bring it all down to 44 inside, like so. This all comes back to you, okay? Into the rack we go with that, and I'm just gonna set it right up for the next shooter. So it's gonna be 25, 50, 65. There's our 70 bucks for the next shooter. This over here on that six will get paid 70 bucks. 70 bucks. We lose this. We lose the field. I'm going to virtually replace them both so you can see it. Quarter goes back to the front side of the rack and the EZ. I'm going to set these back. So that shooter bankroll is tight on both systems. They both have their original bankroll back. They're both gonna be out here playing 44 inside. Now here's where the rhythm is interesting to me because watch this, we're gonna go 44 inside. In this case, how do I say this right? In this case, the difference is they both won at the same time. We got two inside hits initially. Now what's gonna happen is the skill 66, every hit is gonna be profit towards, they only have to win 70 bucks. To be out of this, to be out of the game, seventy bucks to be at twenty percent profit. This person has to turn this forty-four into one sixty-five to be at twenty-five percent or twenty percent. So, you pay this big price, big bankroll to get to here fast, right? Which is good. That's a fee that you pay. It's a exposure risk that you pay to get here fast, and it's gotten here fast almost every single time, which is fantastic. You're show, you're seeing that that's working, but. Now on the back side of this, to make this win at least that much money, it's got to win 165 to be at 20%. You have to work hard here. Over here at the same starting level, 44 inside, this one just has to win a few times to get the 70 bucks. Now, if this happens to be the roll, this person will get the profit faster as well. They had less exposure at the outset. There's a 516. They had more exposure in terms of time 
but now they're actually gonna be on a, on a faster trajectory. So they're both gonna win 14 bucks. We're gonna play it the same way on both sides. We're just gonna do the pineapple press inside on both of them. So I'm gonna press the six and the eight both and take back $2. The same thing for the person in the front. We're gonna get paid 14 bucks and we're gonna do inside out pressing. They're gonna to go to 14, I'm sorry, 12, with $4 coming back. So both players are on the same program here. Let's see if we can get enough hits. We don't get enough hits, but that's okay. The 527 is fine. Both players were at zero risk. Both players were about to go inside, outside, outside, and be close to profit level. So hopefully that kind of shows the difference in rhythm. What I'd like to get, I'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna force this to happen so I can I can talk through this scenario because this, this can come up with both of these. Let's get them both set back up again and make sure that we can, because we've seen the bad case. I wanna show you the, the more interesting case. Let's get the puck off. And again, we're gonna go with our 66 inside back here. I think I've talked through this, but I wanna make sure I can show it to you uh, with, with the actual chips. So that's gonna be here. HCS, go back out one more time. All right, let's take the scenario where we get some offsetting hits. Let's say that, that we get um, this, we get a five. That, that five is a bad example because this is gonna be out of the hand too quick. Let's do like a, I don't know, like a, like a six. Let's get a, a six. We roll a six. And what's gonna happen here is this. This player in the front, they're gonna win a quarter. When all the things change, they net one quarter on the six. This player in the back is gonna be at 21, drop the, the, the nickel, and we're gonna press it all up. Now we get a 10. Or let's say, yeah, let's, let's, get, let's get at six, four, 10. What happens here is again, you lose these, um, but you're gonna win a net quarter on that transaction and that person's out of the hand. So here's a case where we took the two hits, right? This player back here is gonna be at 44 inside. And we'll, I'll get him set up. Ahead of this person in the back getting that second hit. So we, they both experienced the same two numbers rolling, okay? The EZ has a little bit of profit and 44 happening. This person's still waiting for the second point to hit, okay? Let's assume that we get, I don't know, let's, let's make it be a, a nine. Let's make this be a nine, okay? We get a nine coming in. Now, the person in the back, the 66, is gonna get paid their $28, finally. Here comes the 28 bucks for that nine being hit. They can come down. They have just now regressed and are considered to be out of the hand. They're even in the hand right now. Sorry, it took me a while to get the chips all cleaned up here. All right, they're even and they're playing at 44. At the same time, this person was already there because they took the two earlier hits. They're now showing profit. The person in the front of the rack is actually able to now start whatever they're gonna do. If they're gonna go pressing, right, they're gonna get paid on the nine. 14 bucks, they can now start their press or they can just start racking profit. Either way, they're a whole roll ahead of this person in that, in that circumstance. So that's a difference, right? That's the thing with, I talk about rhythm all the time. The easy gets you here faster, so you're collecting quicker. Now they're in profit, this person just got here to foundation. If that took four rolls, this person might've collected four times before this person ever gets to being able to collect if that makes sense, right? They're both decent and fun strategies. They both are based on sound principles. It's about when your risk is and what risk you have. Easy, enormous bankroll risk, but you're short exposure wise. The 66, smaller bankroll risk, longer time exposure. Hope that makes sense when I explain it that way. So that's a, that to me is the difference. It's not about which one wins more money. It's about when they're at risk and when they're exposed and how that looks out. So that's what I wanna see. So there we have, I think, an interesting way to evaluate two strategies looking at the same problem. They're both trying to get us to a foundation and play for the long roll, give you opportunity to win. The quarter pounder requires a lot more money up front, but you're out of that hand in two non-seven rolls guaranteed. The skill 66 
has half the investment, but because it relies on inside numbers, you could be there for a while, making you more open to the early or even mid roll seven before it starts to gain traction. So again, it's a risk reward between the two of them. As you can see from the rollout, sometimes the seven gets you no matter what you do, they're both gonna get crushed on an early seven, but the idea remains the same. I think that these are interesting ways to play. They're relatively safe and they're relatively effective at getting you to foundation so you can roll on and play. So with that said, love to hear from you in the comments. Always appreciate your viewership. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. God bless.